Hi Gemini, welcome to your February 2018 love reading. It's Rena here. Um, as you can see, I've already laid out the cards. I was getting started and I heard shoveling <laughs> of snow outside and it was pretty loud, so I'm starting over again. So, the heart of the matter is the Nine of Swords. This is a card of insomnia, thinking too much, which Geminis are wont to do. You guys know that you have a tendency to um, sometimes think too much. And actually, swords connect to air signs like Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. So there might be somebody in your life. Uh, maybe this is some love relationship that has become oppressive. Um, the other person may be very um, bad for you. And so you're really thinking about what to do about this. Sometimes this is about making mountains out of molehills. And you know how our minds get the best of us and go wild thinking of all these possibilities. What if, what if. In the past position is the Four of Cups, which is a card of emotional dissatisfaction. I did uh, once find a definition or interpretation in one of my books that was actually about a stable love situation. So in that scenario, this could be about someone that may be actually good for you, but because they don't generate those feelings of excitement or unpredictability, you may misinterpret it as being that you're bored with the relationship. And especially if somebody grows up in a dysfunctional family, you can get trained to, to like be always in a crisis mode. And even when you get older, you would think logic would tell you that people would shy away from Christ, a crisis. But in fact, if you get um, emotionally imprinted that way, you may just automatically assume that if somebody is very stable and predictable, that that means that they're boring and to stay away from them. And the people that keep you on the edge of your seat, but they may be crazy. I mean, they may be little, literally unhinged or at the very least uh, unreliable. Those are the people that you might find somewhat attractive. This can also just simply mean that your relationship has run its course and you're not interested. And that person may be interested in you, but it's not mutual. <clears throat> what I have for you now is, is the lover's card. Now, the lover's card connects to Gemini, if you didn't know that. But there's, it can also mean a choice. Um, so perhaps if there are two parties involved... <laughs> Uh, you may feel this sense of like uh, neither one being really that optimal for your life. But who knows, maybe it's a choice of whether or not to just leave a relationship or stay in it. And in that case, the choice seems pretty clear. But for whatever reason, you may be doubting your uh, decision. Now, one reason you may be doubting things is that it's possible that the person is, is a good person, is showing you love, but you know in your heart of hearts that you don't love this person. And that may be what the Nine of Swords is all about, is that you feel guilty because you feel like you should love them because they love you. And it doesn't work that way, obviously. The higher message is the King of Swords. Now, this can have different meanings, obviously. For some people, it may be like advice on the spiritual level that you have to marshal all your forces and do not allow sympathy to keep you bogged down in a relationship 
that is simply not working out for you and where you don't feel mutual affection. Another possibility is that this is the other person, especially if they are an air sign as well, and maybe they have a hard time showing their emotions, and that's what's leaving you feeling flat. Because they may be over-intellectualizing um, themselves, their feelings, and they're out of touch with their emotions, and you don't feel that sense of intimacy, and that's what the, the lover's card is all about, is... Having more than just a surface relationship, having a deeper one. It's not just about the physical relationship, but having emotional intimacy as well. What crosses you is represented by the Emperor card. Now, this card connects to the sign of Aries. Uh, in terms of temperament, this is like black and white thinking, binary thinking, as they call it. And... Again, this could be a facet of this person. So you may be held back by this person because they are very rigid mentally. And there's a controlling aspect to them where they want to control the narrative and they're not willing to do the work on themselves. You may tell them that you're looking for emotional satisfaction and they may... Um, talk you out of it by, you, you know, almost ridiculing you, making you seem like you're uh, asking for the moon. And in some cases, the king of swords, even though that's in the upright position, um, there can be like head games that are being played by the other person where they are trying to get you to think that this is all your fault and that you're asking for too much from a relationship. And for those Geminis that resonate with this scenario that I am presenting to you, if you have a, an ideal of what your, you know, the type of relationship that you're looking for involves, and you're involved with somebody who really is closed in with their emotions and they're not willing to share them, then don't settle for less because there are going to be some Gemini people where that King of Swords is you and you have trouble expressing yourself emotionally. But some of you, especially if you have a lot of Cancer inner planets, or your moon could be in a, in a water, any water sign, you may um, feel that the relationship you're currently in is lacking the, the type of emotional connection that you're yearning for. So that's why I brought up the two types of Geminis, because some of you may be the ones that need to become more emotionally available. And the emperor, the emperor in reverse is a facet of you too, where you just start, and in some cases, you may have a lot of Taurus energy, which can be rigid, and also it's an earth sign, so it's not going to be emotional, like, uh, like air signs are not emotional. So that's kind of where that problem may lie, is that some of you are more emotional than others, and... The other person may be trying to rationalize why they are the way that they are, but if you have the need for a, a relationship that you really can bear your soul to that person, then hold out for something better. The advice is represented by the Ten of Cups, or this could be at the near future. This could be meeting somebody who is marriage material. This is the card of marriage, family joy. It's possible that you will attend a wedding and meet somebody at the wedding. But um, this is what I'm talking about. Hold out for your happily ever after. Don't settle for a relationship with, which leaves you emotionally flat because that's not how it's supposed to be. Even if you're somebody who isn't particularly 
mushy, you don't like to uh, talk about your feelings all the time, there will be an unspoken emotional bond between you and that other person. You don't have to. I mean, sometimes those people that do those really corny things, sometimes I think that they really are out of touch with their feelings. You know, the people that uh, uh, propose to people in public places and stuff. Sometimes I wonder if that is really um, sincere because when you have to make it into such a big production number, to me, the most romantic things are private and they're more intimate, you know. They're not like, oh, okay, look at me, look at what I'm doing, uh, show off -y type of things. And if that's what you're looking for, hold out for the best. Don't settle for second best. The outcome is the best thing that an air sign like Gemini can hope for. The Ace of Swords. The Ace of Swords is a, a, a card of beginnings, of success. But it's like success by because you are seeing something as it really is. There's a, a truth behind this card. There's a moment of clarity. And you are seeing your life as it really is. If you're involved with somebody who you feel is is creating this sense of being trapped in a dull, loveless relationship, at least on your part, then you have the ability to take those steps to change your life. That's what the Ace of Swords would be. And you're no longer in this state of anxiety about, oh my God, what, you know, I must be a bad person or what am I going to do? You kind of marshal your forces and you do what you need to do in order to make it happen. So I like I like uh, the Ace of Swords for you, Gemini. In any case, I hope that you enjoyed this. If you would like a private reading, please click on the link below. Um, my website is rainandmoonastrology.com. Otherwise, have an awesome February, Gemini. Bye.